This is a small listing of the careers that are available in information technology. Information technology right now is used everywhere, in every industry, in every field of endeavor, it is pervasive. And it's not just creating code and creating software. There are a large number of occupations that depend on information technology working correctly. Uh, there's a network specialist, uh, computer support specialist, database administrators, technology analyst, and a security specialist. Uh, within computer science, you have software and application developers, programmers, and web developers. Um, you can, each of these are set up as a link, and if you click this, you can see what a network specialist and field technician do. So network specialists are the people who deploy and create networks, IT networks. Uh, they make sure it's up and running, working properly, optimizing it, and working to protect it. Uh, network field technician are the people who go out, install these networks, and repair them in on-site situations as the time uh, as they come up and they need to be dealt with. Ah, that's lovely. Now I knew I had missed one of those. Okay, fly up here. Okay, there we go. Uh, each of these links will take you to various descriptions for them. Cybersecurity, virtualization or cloud technologies. You've all heard of the cloud, right? Everybody's heard about the cloud. Any idea what it is? Me either. <laughs> I'm learning, but there's the cloud technologies uh, are becoming absolutely crucial for all kinds of businesses. Linux and Windows system administration, if you're the person who wants to run IT departments, this is an excellent area to be looking at. Um, there aren't really certifications for Java, JavaScript, uh, C++ for program design. However, all of our courses in these fields transfer to CSU, uh, California State Universities and the UCs. So they are directly transferable credits. Why should you care? This is why. These fields pay well. And the increase is pretty phenomenal. For instance, if you become a networking person, median salary as of right now is around $82,000 a year, and it's expected to have an 8.5% growth rate over the next six years, seven years here. Uh, systems admin, almost 89,000. Cybersecurity median is close to $100,000 per year with a 31% growth rate anticipated between now and 2029. Um, has anybody ever heard of Cisco, the networking company? Has anybody heard of them? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, the, not the Cisco, the food company, the CIS. So they own about 60% of the networking marketplace worldwide. According to Cisco, today there are roughly five excuse me, today there are roughly 22 billion devices connected to the internet. In five years, it's expected to grow to close to 60 billion devices connected to the internet. Right now, we are 5 million cybersecurity workers short. There are 5 million cybersecurity jobs that have not been filled in the last 90 days. That's expected to grow to over 10 million jobs in the next five years. So cybersecurity obviously is every place. Web development, 8% growth. Virtualization, again, that cloud technologies, 30% growth rate. Um, Linux, either Red Hat Linux or uh, Linux Professional Institute, 
12% growth rate. This one is interesting. Programmers, median salary is 86,000 a year. It's expected to see a decline of 9% between now and 2029. It's declining and in large part due to artificial intelligence, being able to tell a computer what I want you to achieve in code and have the computer create the code. On the other hand, software developers, median salary is $110,000 a year with a 26% increase, growth increase. These are the people who develop applications for phones, for computer systems. Uh, these are application people. So pretty significant numbers there. I know they're hard to read a little bit, but those are good, good sized numbers, very good numbers. Okay, so how do you get there? How do I get to, to get, get to be able to do these things? In the, CIS, CS, in the CIS department, we offer three AS degrees, an enterprise networking and security degree, an enterprise system administration, and a web development degree. Um, the networking degree concentrates on networking technologies and cybersecurity. It's designed to help you design, build, configure, install, and maintain computer networks from everything from local area networks up to uh, essentially the internet to be able to, to develop that. The Enterprise System Administration is a focus on administering full systems, computer systems, whether it's a Windows system or a Linux system, but taking all the component parts that are necessary for a functioning IT system to work, and you become the person who designs, builds, installs, and maintains those. Uh, web development is a great career. It's, it's pretty amazing what people are doing with the web and how they have to do it. Uh, essentially, there is no commercial organization and almost all non-commercial organizations have a web presence of some kind. And they need people not only to create the web pages, but monitor and maintain the content. So when you get, when, when I get this to you, here are, here is a sample of the pathway to uh, getting to the security and system admin pathway for network with the security emphasis. These are the core courses that you need to take. So these are, these are the ones that you would take. And these are the ones that you would take basically the first semester starting. In your area of emphasis, uh, you would take these courses. So you need a Windows operating system or a Linux operating system. Cisco Networking Academy, these are three units each. Uh, cyber ops is the training necessary to work in a security operations center. And then fundamentals of network security, it would be the introductory course to network security and understanding cyber security. And then finally, you have a number of choices for electives. Right now, the really hot selective elective are the Palo Alto networks. They are in very high demand. People have training in the Palo Alto networks is in high demand. While Cisco may own close to 60% of the networking marketplace, in the last five years, Palo Alto networks has completely dominated the firewall marketplace. And that's what you would learn to do here is uh, become an expert in the Palo Alto networks firewall very high demand because it's such an extremely effective firewall. Okay. Um, for each of these courses in CIS, there are certifications that are what each of the courses are designed for. 
And we have a large number of certifications that are that you can be become prepared for. Uh, CompTIA, TIA A+, it's the industry standard. It's the, the first certification that you should get. Without it, it is very unlikely you will even ever get an interview for an IT job. Everybody requires it. So our courses are extremely successful at preparing for these certifications. Uh, Network Plus, again, this is an uh, entry-level networking certification. Uh, gives you a nice overview of networking. It's vendor neutral that a lot of companies provide, like to see happen. So it's not hooked to any one particular uh, networking, either HP or Cisco. And again, it's one of the entry level requirements. Uh, security Plus, again, an entry level security certification. It says you have a basic understanding of networking and computer security requirements. And as a result, are able to participate in planning and securing networks. Another one that the link didn't work. Okay, get back up here. Uh, Cisco CCNA, uh, all of these are links to the description of the certifications that we offer, or the classes that would lead to the certifications. Um, is there any one of these anybody's interested in? Because you know, if you let me, I'll just keep yammering. So don't hesitate to enter up and ask questions. No? All right, then you're stuck with the guided tour, no matter <laughs> how boring it is. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, like, what exactly was the certified ethical hacking ah, about? This guy. This one's the fun one. Uh, this is one of my most favorite classes to teach. We teach you how to hack. We teach you how to break into computer systems, into computers, into networks. We teach you how to do that. We teach you all the tools that the bad guys use. In cybersecurity terms, they're not bad guys, they're bad actors. That's the term that's used. Silly term, but that's what it's used. And the reason we do that is you have to know what tools the bad guys are using and how they're using them because your job as a certified ethical hacker is to find the weaknesses in computer systems and networks, let the owners of those systems know where the weaknesses are and teach them how to mitigate those problems, teach them how to prevent them from happening. So you get paid to break into other people's networks and tell them what's wrong. Oh, wow. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah. But remember, you can only use these powers for good. That's why the word ethical is in there. But it, it is a lot of fun, uh, especially penetration testing where you're trying to break in. Nice. Anybody else have any questions on any of these particular ones? Okay. So, I'm, I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. Try again. What are the Palo Alto networks? Ah, here we go. These guys. Yeah. Palo Alto networks. We have three courses that lead to three separate certifications. The first one is the PCCSA, uh, Certified Cybersecurity Associate. That is the introductory course to the Palo Alto Networks firewall. Uh, in here, you learn the basics for how to configure and how to work with the firewall. You, if you don't know anything about networking, you get some introduction to networking and understanding the concepts of a security posture. The PCNSA, the Network Certified uh, Network Security Administrator, is now looking at the uh, most current next generation firewalls, the, NF, the next generation firewalls. And here you become the chief, not necessarily chief, you become the person 
who designs and configures and installs these firewalls um, and maintains these firewalls to make sure they're up and current and active and protecting systems. And then finally, the next one up. So the first one is an entry-level certification. The second one is entry-level to mid-level certification. And then the PCNSE, the Network Security Engineer, uh, is the mid to upper level certification for Palo Alto Networks. Uh, you're the person who's responsible for turning the security policies and postures of an organization into actual defensive mechanisms within the firewall and defending the firewall. Does that kind of give you an idea? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite make that out. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay. And again, I'm more than happy to answer questions in detail. I will put my email address up in chat in just a little bit. Okay, Oops, let's go back here. Uh, the VMware, VCTA and VCP, DCV are uh, the cloud technologies certifications. This is for virtualization. If anybody's interested in that, it's really cool. Takers, any takers? Okay, no takers. Very sad. All right. Uh, I was gonna say sure. <laughs> um, actually, just let me give you a brief history of what uh, virtualization is. Virtualization is the ability to create a computer in a, a virtual computer in a physical hardware computer. Uh, you normally create these in servers. And what's very nice about them is that because they are virtual, you can change the computer's configuration. You can change its capabilities simply by moving a few things around with it. Once you have an image of a computer that you like, like say it's your desktop, you can clone that image into lots of other virtual machines. What's really nice about that is that because they're virtual machines, if they get a virus, if they get attacked, somebody puts ransomware on it, um, it's not a real problem. You just erase them and create a new image, create a new clone in all the space of about three minutes. So virtualization, a lot of businesses are going to it because it saves tremendous costs on hardware and technology and employers, uh, employment number of personnel that you have to have for it. So it's, it's pretty, really pretty cool. Wow. So that's the VMware uh, Certified Technical Associate and Professional Data Center Virtualization. This first one, oh, say, do you have a question? No, okay. Uh, the VCTA, again, is the Entry Overview Certification. Um, I have to tell you, it's really, really easy. It's not a difficult certif certif certification to earn. The VCP DCV is in very high demand. It is the mid-level certification and in very high demand all over the place. Okay. Any others that you might be interested in? Um, what about computer forensics? Ah, that guy. Yeah, computer forensics is an interesting certification to get to. Um, in ethical hacking, your job is to penetrate and find holes in the security. In computer forensics, you come in after somebody's gotten in. Uh, you come in and figure out how they got in, what they did, where they put things, where things are at. Uh, you, you're the guy who goes through and finds the evidence that somebody was being a bad actor. 
And typically you would, if you can get a hold of their computer, you can prove that they did it. Um, typically computer forensics people work very closely with law enforcement. Uh, one of my friends is a teacher, computer forensics teacher up in Santa Rosa, and he works very closely with the FBI as an expert witness. So if you are interested in that aspect of criminal justice, it's really pretty interesting. It can be a little scary. As, as he said, you can't unsee some things, but it can be very, very interesting, very valuable uh, service that's being performed. Any questions? We okay? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. It is. And, and again, you know, these are certifications in different areas, uh, but it isn't limited to just being a computer geek. Um, health information technology, the kind of person who can span that gap between medical personnel and computer people is in very high demand. And, and again, each of these certifications lead into being able to do that. So if you're interested in the medical field, but don't want to become a medical field practitioner um, because it's, well, too ooky, <laughs> technical term there, then health information technology may be the direction that you wanna look at and, and start finding employment in. And that those skill sets require the CompTIA and the Network Plus, Security Plus, definitely a CCNA, um, virtualization, Palo Alto Networks, extremely helpful there. Uh, and to a certain extent, uh, certified ethical hacking and computer forensics. All of those have application in health information technology. Or say for a moment that you're very interested in uh, ecological problems, then maybe you become the person that designs the network to collect data from sensors that are spread throughout the ocean, pulls that data in and puts it in a form that somebody can look at and analyze that data, uh, massive big data analysis. Again, these are skill sets that are gonna be required for that but in an arena that is important to you, not just sitting in a cubicle, typing on a keyboard all day. Does, does that make any kind of sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So these are all just skill sets to have, like just expansive general uh, topics to get into. Yes, that then can okay. be applied everywhere. Wow. And they're stackable skill sets. And as I said, most all of our courses are designed that by the time you've completed the course, you should be qualified to take any of these certification exams. That's what they're designed for. Um, a little bit about our facilities, if and when we ever get to go back on campus. Uh, we have remarkable facilities. We probably have the best equipped labs in the region uh, for any of these certifications. Our classrooms and every student has their own computer in the classroom that has all the software necessary to do what they need to do. The labs are amazing. Uh, again, in the A plus lab, students have a computer that they take apart and put back together. How are you going to learn to maintain and repair computers if you don't have one to work on. So every student has a computer to do that. Uh, in the Cisco Academy, we have over 90 plus devices, routers, switches for you to work with. So you have hands-on training. And NetLab is a virtualization system that we have that allows us to teach ethical hacking. Most school districts would not be too happy to have you have the students work with uh, hacking tools on the school network. I, I think it isn't hard to understand why they might not care for that. We can put them in a virtualized environment in that lab where they can do everything 
and have it be completely safe. It's not gonna affect their computers at home. It's not gonna affect the computers at school. So in that environment, it's absolutely fantastic. So we've got great facilities. What's the cost to attend? Most certification boot camps, depending on the certification, will run you between $3,000 and $10,000 to prepare you to take the certification exam. Those typically occur in the space of a week. So they're very short term, very intensive. They teach directly to the examination test, but you get very little, mostly no hands-on experience with it. So you come out of there having taken a test, passing the test, and not having the skill, but you pass the test. Or you can come to us. We charge $46 a unit. Most of our classes are three unit classes. So you're looking at $138 for the class. They're typically a semester long and typically they're 50% lecture, 50% lab. So by the time you are done with the, by the time you're done with the course, you will have spent hours and hours and hours with hands-on experience doing this for real. So that when you do take your certification exam and you pass it, you can demonstrate to an employer, potential employer, you know what you're doing. You can do this, you've done it before. So in terms of cost to attend, it takes a little bit longer, but by the end, you're far better prepared than you would be going to a boot camp. Question, we okay with that? I mean, I think it, pretty strong point there. Okay. And then finally, our faculty backgrounds. Where we have three full-time faculty uh, with broad experience and skills. Uh, one of our instructors has an, uh, her uh, bachelor's degree is in chemical engineering and worked in that field for a while in the IT section of chemical engineering. We have a Marine Corps colonel who spent a very significant portion of his career in IT within the Marine Corps. And you've got me who spent 20 plus years in biotech as the computer guy and immunologist. So we all have over 20 years of experience in, our, in IT in our fields. And then our adjunct faculty are absolutely outstanding. Uh, they are practicing experts. They make their living as systems administrators uh, in cybersecurity. Two of my instructors work for uh, Spaywar. Uh, one is responsible for quality assurance and quality control for software that goes into Spayware. And the other is responsible for uh, network defense systems for the Navy. We have uh, database administrators. Uh, he is responsible for running the database for the city of Chula Vista. Networking people, we have an, an adjunct instructor who is the wide area network manager for Kratos. Kratos is responsible for handling the networking for the federal government. So we have a tremendous amount of experience here. And then finally, the thing that scares most students coming into this is I'm not a computer geek. I've never been a computer geek. How am I gonna do this? You are not alone here. We have both our full-time and adjunct instructors office, off, offer office hours during the week. And in every case that I know of, if you are not able to attend those office hours during the week at the scheduled time, they are more than happy to meet with you at other times. They make themselves available. Uh, they're very, very good about that. We have a tutoring center. Uh, the tutoring center is amazing. They provide tremendous support. They vet all of their tutors through, the, at least the ones for the CISCS department, they vet all of their tutors through me or uh, the other two full-time instructors. 
uh, depending on what they're going to be, what subjects they're going to be tutoring in. The tutors are well qualified, extremely friendly, and very interested in your success. And then finally, in the student services, we offer really great support in student services. Uh, there's the Counseling and Career Center, the Veteran Center, uh, Health and Wellness Center, and Transfer Center. So if maybe your objective down the road is to transfer to a four-year institution, uh, working closely with the Transfer Center will help guide you into that pathway and get you in. So that sums up my quick approach. Hopefully I didn't put anybody too much asleep. Yeah, that was pretty, um, that was like a lot of broad topics, but um, yeah, they're very intriguing. Um, is there any scholarships that are available in this um, career path? Yes, yes there are. There are several scholarships that are out there, uh, Cal Grants and financial aid. Uh, there are a large number of scholarships, uh, particularly for women. Uh, women are underrepresented in IT. Only about 25% of the workforce is, are female in IT. And IT has spent several hundred, as an industry, has spent several hundred million dollars over the last 10 years trying to change that. They want that changed. And as a result, there are a number of programs to help with financial aid for women who are trying to enter IT, which I think is pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, my daughter went through our program and is graduating two weeks from Point Loma Nazarene University with her Bachelor's of Arts in IT. That's amazing. Uh, it's a pretty interesting program there. It's good. So the answer to your question is yes. There are scholarships there. Uh, there are lucrative career paths there. And what you learn through these programs, you will be able to apply in any area that, that you are interested in. Thank you. Yeah, happy to. Any other questions? I, or is everybody just kind of overwhelmed? Too much detail? All right, let me, I'm putting my email address up on the chat. And if you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to email me. Absolutely email me. Oh, or if you would like to, I don't know if I have the, Elijah, do you know who has the recording for this? Will I get the link to I it? Believe, do you know? I believe maybe Kevin will have the recording, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Well, tell you what, if you could have Kevin email me the link to the recording, yeah. then if anybody wants to have this recording available to them, uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to send them the link. Yeah, I'll make or, sure to I'll make sure to message Kevin to see. Uh, right, or or in addition to, if you are interested in the slide deck, um, there are quite a few slides that I simply because of time purposes didn't connect to or link or uh, show you. But these talk about what each of these do, uh, what their function is. So there's quite a bit of, of information here yet. And then the certifications that are available uh, within uh, certificates of achievement and certificate of specializations. So it talks about all of those. So there's quite a bit more here. We just simply, I didn't want to bore you to death going through all the detail. So I built it so you could link to it and see it. And then you can have this for your own. And tell your friends and neighbors that they need to come here. Oops. So does that make sense? So we have yes. to email you, we want the slideshow link. I'm sorry, say again? We need to email you if we want the slideshow link. 
uh, I will send you the slideshow packet. Oh, okay. I, I will send you the whole PowerPoint presentation. Do we need to email you or is that automatic? Uh, no, you'll need to email me because I don't have your email addresses. Okay. Unless uh, somebody else has them and is willing to send them to me. But uh, yeah, if you, if you email me for the slide deck, I'm very happy to do that. I went to a lot of work on this, so you know, I'm really happy to. Uh, to, <laughs> it, was, to that it was too. very well written as well. It was very. I clean. really, I really appreciate this presentation. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Most people, most people are terrified of information technology. Uh, you know what? What's the usual thing you hear about it? Is you, you've got to be really smart to understand that, right? Right. That's what most people think. All right. Let me let you in on a little secret. It is requires less smart to work in IT than it does to work in the humanities. In IT, it's pretty binary. It either works or it doesn't. And you just keep tweaking things till it works. In the humanities, you've got to think. And that's just way too much work for me. As, as I tell all my students, the most important thing to know about me as a teacher is I am lazy. Most important thing to know. So I'd much rather tweak it till it works than have to think hard. So it is not that hard. It, it, you don't need to be a genius. Um, and in fact, for most of IT careers, you don't need to have advanced math skills. Uh, Basically, if you can add and subtract, you're pretty much set in terms of math skills. So it's, it's really not that. To, let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever taught a child to tie their shoes? Anybody? Yeah. Um, I taught my brother how to tie them. <laughs> okay. If you can teach a child how to tie their shoes, you are an expert programmer because tying a shoe is a very complicated task, isn't it? It really is. And in order to teach a child to tie their shoes, you have to break down that very complicated task into individual steps and put them in the correct order. And if you can do that, you're a programmer because that's all a programmer does. Linda, I think you muted. Did you, were you saying something? Nope, still can't hear you. Oh. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Nope, oh, went back to off mute, okay. Um, any okay, other questions I'm about still... any of this? Say again, Linda? I'm still here. Okay. So don't let this scare you. It's really very accessible. People are always surprised when they get done with one of these courses on the amount that they've learned and they didn't think they could learn it. So don't, don't be afraid to do that. Anything else I can do for anybody? Did you guys get my email address? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Make sure you got it or you copied it from the clipboard. Yeah, I got it. Okay. And again, I'm, I'm happy to send this to you and answer any other questions. Well, this well, is very I informative. I Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. It's been my pleasure. Yes, thank you. Like I said at the outset, the biggest problem with me is getting me to shut up. As, as you may have gathered, I'm pretty proud of our program. Um, we change lives in our program. We have a significant number of our students that are changing careers. 
and are coming from careers that don't pay very well to getting these certifications and getting in jobs that pay better and within five years are typically making, if not six figures, very close to it as an annual salary. And I'm very proud of that. I like knowing that I'm a part of that. I'd like a 10% kickback, but that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I went over, I'm afraid, but I think that's it for me. Uh, again, I'm happy to talk to anybody about this in greater detail. Uh, Elijah, thank you for having me. Yep. And uh, if any of you uh, students have any questions about Queen Maca kind of in general, uh, I can also answer any of those questions if you have them.